detective knows. What's that? It's six o'clock. I'll tell you tomorrow. Sway in the morning, Shade 4 5. Citizens, our good buddy is here. And what I love about this man, I told him he's been to the show a few times. I mean, we've been here with Sway in the morning seven years. And he's been to the show a few times, and he tries to stop by. I feel like at least once a year, he'll come by and say hi to us. And uh, as soon as he walked in, I looked down, and sure enough, he put his paper right down on the console. <laughs> he always comes in with a newspaper. And I'm not sure if that's just a New York thing or it's a personality thing, but I read the paper every day coming in to work from um, New Jersey here to New York City where we broadcast from. And when I don't have a paper, I feel like I'm missing something. It's kind of like how people have their phones. They can't go without their phones. I, ha I love having a newspaper every day. And I'm talking about the one and only Tony Danza. He is here Thank you. hanging out hey, with Tony. us. It's, Tony, how my, long have you been my, reading the paper? My pa well, since I'm a kid, my, my father always read the paper. But, you know, it's like an assignment. I gotta finish it before the end of the day. You, know? <laughs> you gotta see when you got you got yesterday's paper too, and you got oh, you gotta go through it. No, you gotta I, go through it. I just think it's a uh, you know it's it's incumbent upon us to uh, to be as informed as possible, and the only way you can really be informed is to read it, to to get an in depth look at what mm -hmm. uh, at the issues. To touch it, to to look at the pages, to see what's yeah, going on. Yeah, I like on. to do yeah. tactile. Yeah, same, same, same thing. You know, I used to ride the subway when I was a kid. I'd ride the subway. Everybody was reading the paper. Yeah. Now everybody. He's playing Candy Crush. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, you don't have Candy Crush on your phone? No. <laughs> no Get games? Out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Tony, have you mastered the art of the fold of the paper? Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you know what? What's great, you know, I mean, because of papers now, you know, they're losing smaller. money. They're so much smaller. This, yeah. The New York Times used to be giant. Oh, yeah. Better, yeah. Be, better be good. Yeah. You know, and you know how you, but when you get good at it, you could use the wind. You could, you know, you yeah. could, <laughs> turn yeah. the page. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, that's good. Well, you're here to talk about The Good <laughs> Cop. It's premiering Friday, uh, September 21st on Netflix. Yeah. Um, it's so cool. Like, Sanaa Lathan just literally walked out and she was talking about Netflix and her film that's coming out on Netflix. What is it like for you being a part of this system now uh, I tell you, pretty soon we're all going to be working for them. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, it was great. I mean, they, you know, uh, we got to shoot here in New York, mm -hmm. and, and you know what? That, that that's a lot of bread to, yeah. to shoot here in New York, and they were really, uh, really supportive, and uh, and they let you do what you do. They don't uh, really butt in. They're not creatively uh, restrictive. So mm. it, I loved it. I mean, I, I just uh, I, I'm hoping the show works, and I can get a home there. <laughs> yeah. I'll move in. Yeah, you're, you know. you're <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold. DB? Yeah, I was reading, um, you and your son have a great relationship. I mean, you guys, like, you know, you've done books together, you've done a lot of work together, but then I also read that he helped you get into character to play uh, Josh Groban's uh, father, and uh, I was just curious about, like, what is it like kind of working with your actual son in, in, in order to get you into character? Well, well, actually, you know, what really, really happened was is that, you know, I have this son, I, I, he was born when I was 19, he's 47, um... And when you have a son, a kid, when you're that young, you know, one of two things can happen. You could ruin both lives or you have the greatest relationship of all time. And we got the second, you know, we got the latter, me and uh, he and I. And what I just tried to do was take that relationship that I have with my son and overlay it on Josh and I. That was the characterization I went for. And what was great is Josh just bought right in. Josh is really, I'm telling you, he's really going to be the guy that surprises because he's really, he's really terrific. But he just bought on in and and what's really nice about the show is it's an odd couple don't get me wrong but there's a real father son element to it and mm -hmm. and it and it and it and it and, and especially when you know when there's danger involved like you know when he's going out and I tell him put on his hey wear your vest you know so I'm a, I mean it's I, I by the way I sing the theme song <laughs> By the way, how about you? I'm doing a show with Josh Groban. He's fighting and I'm singing. I mean, this, this is shit. There it is. Oh, I love it. Oh. Yeah, so, I mean, it's uh, he's really he's really a lot of fun to work with. I, uh, I'm just really, you know, and then we got Isaiah Whitlock from mm -hmm. the Y. Yeah, she is yeah. Ama yeah, amazing. And uh, Monica Barbaro and Billy Kotkamp. And it's uh, just a tremendous. And then the guy who wrote it is the guy who created Monk mm -hmm. and wrote mm -hmm. Monk. Wow. His name's Andy Breckman, yeah. wrote for Saturday Night Live, wrote for Letterman. He's sort of a savant. So he does these mi murder mysteries, you know, not too dark. Hopefully we're going to, you know, outside 
instead of the murder, it's a family show. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can watch it with your family. Uh, <laughs> murder bringing families together. Yeah. You know. And by the way, that's that's really where you have to be uh, deft because, you know, you do jokes around, a, a, you know, and there's like something else going on. But I, but he's really brilliant, and you get to, he, you know, it's like, I, I've always had a problem with sometimes putting things in my own words when I act. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, well, I could, you know, I could make it sound more. I want to do every every syllable this guy writes. I don't want to mess with a word. He says mm-hmm. it's like a song. The scenes are like songs. If you move a word, you take it out a note. You know, mm-hmm. so it, it was really fun. I mean, it's just the. Uh, you know, shooting in New York too. Yeah, I, I, I can't tell you how much fun it's for you sleep in your own bed. Number one, mm-hmm. but but then using New York as the canvas it was is just amazing. And especially when Netflix supports you, there was a we're, we're a big organization. You know, we look like an army. We landed in uh, Long Island Center, a city on location in this this uh, uh, intersection. And I, 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 I'm getting ready, and I noticed there's this giant construction crew across the street, the backhoes, uh, dump trucks, guys standing around doing nothing. You know, it was that kind of thing. <laughs> I, just, uh, I, just, I said, wow, we can't find a location without a construction crew. So I walked over, and I said hello to one of the guys, and they were atmosphere. They were actually extras. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So they really support you. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Tony Dez is here hanging out with us, talking about the good cop premiering on on Friday, September 21st <laughs> on Netflix. If you want to talk to him, 888-742-3345. It's Sway in the Morning. <laughs> Tony Danza is here hanging out with us at Sway in the Morning Show. We're so happy to have him picking his brain while the music is playing. He's talking about the Good Cop premiere Friday, September 21st on Netflix. Tony, I'm going to take it back just a little bit because you shared something personal with us when you first sat down and said that you had a son at 19. Mm. And when you have a child that young, either one or two things can happen. Either you guys can form a great relationship or you can ruin it for the both of you. There are a lot of young men, obviously. A lot of young women, too. But I want to focus on the men. A lot of young men out here who have children right now at that age. Teenage fathers, if you will. We always focus on teenage mothers. Mm -hmm. But teenage fathers, like you, you were one. Um, what would you tell a young man right now that was 19 with a child? Well, you know, I, I, I often say that I, I got lucky because uh, my kid grew up good in spite of me, you know, because I was uh, 19. I was a kid. I didn't know what the heck I was doing either. Um, but I, you know, what I will say is if you can get through that, if you can, if you can, uh, um, my son's so great. What's hard about having a son like this he's got two boys and i watch him you know my grandsons i watch him father his sons and he's it's so profound to see your son fathering his sons but especially because he's so much better at it than i i was you know like i said to him one day i said you know what the difference between you and me as a father is i said you see how you take your kids to play baseball I used to take you to watch me play baseball. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, so this is what I'm trying to say as far as he grew up in spite of me. <laughs> but we hung in there together. We hung in there together. And, 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 and there were tough times, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, boys, they start to feel their oats, and, and he did. And uh, and it was a broken family. And, and, and But he uh, – but now, if you stick with it, it's worth it. Stick I mean, I – I'm telling you something. I I I I don't know what I'd do without him. I mean, I mm. he's he's just amazing, and I'm so proud of him. Uh, it's, it's and again with the kids, he's got more patience than than I I ever had. But uh, but it's just this incredible relationship. It's just so strong. It's I I can't even describe it. It, may, it makes me want to cry. Wow. <laughs> it's like that. No, you know? but it's beautiful to hear because I don't think it's something that. We don't have the opportunity to hear it a lot. We- you gotta stick. You gotta stay with it because um, you gotta remember what it was like when you were a kid. Mm. And nowadays it's so much harder to be a kid. So you have to really stick with it, and and and, and it pays off. I think if if uh, if you do, I think mm. it does. DB, I was just curious because a lot of people, when you have kids at that age. And you already have dreams and aspirations to do things, and sometimes that can kind of put a hold on it. Did that? How did that affect you as far as focusing on your career? Well, you know, it's it, that's another thing. You know, uh, what happened was, as I I got my son, he came. I got 
custody of my son while I was on taxi. And, uh, and so I was young. I was young and I was, you know, in my first TV show and I was dealing with that. And, uh, but I, you know, I, I, uh, first of all, it was great to have this little kid. He was, uh, you know, he, he was, he's a hip kid. He's really, he's really, uh, he's a smart guy and he's, and, and when he was a kid, he was, you know, he, he was better than having a puppy. The girls, they go, holy <laughs> crap, look at this. You know, and, and so. <laughs> Tony you know, so, crazy. So I, but no, I, what I did was he was with me all the time. Yeah. You know, so I took him with me. I mm -hmm. took him to everything. And he grew up with a lot of, I grew up with a lot of adults, you know. And that, uh, but I, I just, like I said, to me it was uh, totally give him most of the credit because, like I said, but. Sticking with it. Stick with Sticking it. Sticking with it. I'm telling you, I, I had a thing when one time, this is really, I don't believe I'm going to tell you this. It was about 18, 19, 18, I don't know. And he, uh, we were having trouble. And I told him, you got to go. You can't stay here. You got to get out of the house. And he went. And then I cried myself to sleep every night because I was so afraid something would happen to him, you know. Mm -hmm. And he came back one day and I got home and he was there. And he says, what are you, what's happening? I said, what are you doing? He said, I got to go to court tomorrow. I got to testify for my friend. I said, what are you talking about? He said, what happened? He said, well, I was at a party and this guy got stabbed. And uh, I'm going to testify. I said, let me ask you something. How, how good a friend is this? You know? He says, to me, well, you know, it's a guy. You know, I said, hey, look, do yourself a favor. This is not something you want to be involved in. You know, you, you, you can't do that. He says to me, I'm, I got to do it then. I said, you can't do it. And it became that Mexican standoff, or whatever. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. But it became that standoff. <laughs> it's just a, t it's just yeah, a term. Yeah. I didn't yeah. mean it. You, know, you got to be so careful. Oh, my God. Holy crap. But it became that standoff where you're going to have to do something. And I smacked him. <laughs> I never hit him before, and I smacked him. And I gave him a good, pretty good shot. And he went down, and he put his f hand over his face, and I saw that blood because I must have given him a blood I gave him a bloody nose and I, and for that second I was sitting there standing there thinking God what have I done and he looked up and he went okay dad and it was he just that was the end of it you know it was just it went my way and he agreed with me and then he came back and everything since then he went to college he finished school and hey, you, know, you just had to smack the shit out of him that was it, right <laughs> I don't want to say it but, no but no. no we get it no, no it's, yeah, I really I mean I don't I don't uh, I don't advocate people do that but but it was that moment and it just happened and and, uh, and I'm so glad uh, you know but he's that kind of kid yeah. you know what I mean he he's not a he's not a dummy no, they all laughing because I am an advocate of of, of slapping the shit out of your oh, yeah. kids. So oh. you saying you not, and they you saying it to me is hysterical. So it was a long you. time ago, too. No. By the way, you know he's forty seven now. Yeah, you know yeah. my son's. You know, come on. But you're a professional. You box too. Yes. So you hit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 So you, you, don't, you don't want yeah. that. Y'all yeah. so, oh, make sure y'all support the Good Cop on Friday, September twenty first. This is our friend here, man. We Thank love you. Tony Danza. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming by. Hey, I just want to say one thing. You know, because Sway's not here, I I was hypnotized by that interview with Eminem. I was hypnotized by you it. Oh it. my God, I couldn't take my eyes off. Leave Sway a message. He'll be here tomorrow. Yeah, so leave him a message, Tony. Say something to him about Sway. It. We got to talk about that interview, man. But you were you were you were brilliant. I loved the way you handled it. It was really cool. It was really really interesting. That's dope, man. You on tour too, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to in Williamsport. Uh, I'm going to be in uh, Saint Ch uh, the Saint George in Staten Island on October seventh. I'm in uh, Williamsport. I think uh, September twenty seventh. Mm -hmm. I'm in Ridgefield, Connecticut. I'm all over the place. So look you got on the a website? website. Yeah, I got what a website. It? TonyDanza.com. TonyDanza.com. You better act like you know. Hey,